day, you too. Today I want to talk about something that I've been thinking about because of where we are with the economy and more so inflation. Of course, this is the main thing that I want to talk about is how to beat inflation because it is bad right now. Gasoline. Of course, gasoline prices go up. Everything else goes up. Groceries, restaurants. Got an email at work that the base haircuts for, for guys, at least for what I get, is going from fourteen fifty to about eighteen dollars and eighty cents. Almost twenty dollars, which that's just the way it is. And this topic is going to apply to many people. Of course there are some people who are not affected for whatever reason, maybe because they're financially in a really good situation where they're like, you know what, it's, yes, it's unfortunate or it sucks, but they're fine and that's a good thing. So if any of you are in that situation, congratulations, continue to do that. And if you can, mentor someone because your success should be shared with others. So I have some notes here. Inflation is high, as you know that. Goods and services prices have gone up, and when that happens, it reduces our purchasing power. I have some notes, but I also want to apply something from mine at the end. The first thing is, in this situation where we are now, is hopefully you have a budget, because a budget is going to give you a financial picture of where you are with your income and your expenses, and hopefully after you pay off your expenses, you have a surplus money left over. If not, the opposite of that is a deficit, meaning you are not making it. And that's not a good thing. I will, as I was thinking about this today at work, I can say that inflation I'm going to relate it to when I was a brand new individual in the Air Force as a youngster with a family and children, and we were broke. So I'm going to kind of relate inflation and being broke and I've been there and I'm not broke anymore but it took a lot of work it took a vision it took consistency and that is a topic for another day as you may know I started this channel talking about finances many years ago and I've gotten away from that but I love the topic of finances and I was a financial counselor for the Air Force for six years so a budget but be honest, when you have your budget, all you need is an Excel document, how much income you have, if you're married, your spouse's income, and your expenses, and that's going to tell you where you are, whether you like that or not. Next thing is a strategy. I love strategy. I don't play chess. I've never played chess, but I'm really good at checkers. My point is the game of chess and checkers, I can assume, are similar in the sense that it requires strategy. I love strategy, like I said, at one point. I was broke and I didn't like that and I was embarrassed and that's when I said I'm going to have strategy for my life financially. Next thing is you need to know, and this is easier said than done, but it is possible, the difference between needs and wants. Needs, food, rent, mortgage, gasoline, things like that. Wants, I love Patagonia, of course, I'm a thrifter, I paid two dollars for this, probably sells for sixty. But I paid two dollars at a thrift shop. This is a want. So I'm not the individual that's going to go to the Patagonia store often and get something new when I can get it at a thrift shop. So definitely know the difference between needs and wants. Wants, you may have to pause that. And you may not like that about this video, but, it, and I've done that. So if I have to pause something on something that I want, so be it. Next, if you are surviving with credit cards, you're losing already. You're not getting by because you need a credit card to pay your expenses or to make ends meet. And that's not to shame anyone, it's just that credit cards are not your friend. You are getting into debt, most likely you are paying interest, and you're also reducing your future paychecks. So credit cards, don't borrow, stay away from that. Next is a real big thing, is eating out, dining out. I love to eat out. But during the week, Monday through Friday, for the most part, I take my lunch from home, leftovers. 
and if I forget it or we went out the night before and there's no leftovers, I don't want to spend $12 for lunch. That's one option, and that's how much lunches are these days, unless you go to Taco Bell and order a la carte. I don't really do that for the most part. I'll go to the dining facility on Peterson Space Force Space, and out of all of the bases that I've been to, that one has the worst food. And I spend about $4.00. I don't really like that, but I'll do that once once in a while. And sometimes they do cook something that's good, but for the most part, I take my lunch from home. The other thing is I observe when you have a family of four or five or six and everybody has a soft drink. First of all, I gave up drinking sodas six or about eight years ago. And I don't pay for sodas, so I just drink water. Can I afford a soda? Yes. Can I afford a beer? Yes. Sometimes I, if I want a glass of wine or, or a beer, I'll do that. But for sodas and an appetizer, and it adds up quick. Eating out to include coffees. I, I love coffee, but I take my coffee from here. Now, don't think that I'm a cheapskate and I'm trying to just secure money because I live life. I spend as well. But what I'll share at the end, and that's coming soon. The other thing, next thing is buy used. It's okay to buy used. Like I said, I go to thrift shops. Not everything has to be used. We just bought a washer and dryer because that went out. My wife said, let's get something used. I was like, nope, we've done that before and it only lasts two or three years. Let's go out and we bought a brand new washer and dryer and we're happy about that. Do you have anything in your house that you can sell that you don't want, that you don't need, that you don't use? Or do you want to go out there and get a part-time job? To me, time is precious. I have a collection of stuff in those two closets. And if it came to where I needed to make extra money or get a part-time job, I'm gonna sell my collection because it just sits there. And it is a lot of stuff. In fact, if you see over there, that is my daughter's wedding dress. She got married just a few days ago and yesterday moved to Florida. Her husband now is a staff sergeant in the Air Force and she's moved on to her life. And Julia, my wife and I, financed the majority of that wedding and that felt really good. So next thing you know is, like I said, going back to what I was just saying is, do you want to sell some, some of your stuff or do you want to get a part-time job to make extra money? For me, when I say wants and needs, for me, wants is a vacation. I love travel. I love vacation. So if I was in a situation where I have to delay a vacation, I would do that as well. And I've done that before. Maybe you have to get a roommate. Maybe you have to rent a house, excuse me, a room in your house to make extra money. And if you do do that, because a lot of people do that these days, is be smart with that extra income that you get. I have two more things. Next one is pay attention. It's free. Look to see what someone is doing that works. And sometimes be, you have to be aware that sometimes people may seem like they are doing it and they're successful but they're really in debt or the example of keeping up with the Joneses is not a good thing. So pay attention to what works, pay attention to what doesn't work. And the last thing before I give my example is be realistic, stick to it. Dave Ramsey has a saying that whatever you pursue you will succeed at whatever you pursue. So be realistic and stay the course. The last thing that I want to talk about, my personal example is my wife and I are 100% debt free. Everything is paid off. The house, we have two cars, 